about determining the formula mass of an acid salt. So, I will be given a solid where it's only written an acid salt. The only information I know about this acid salt that it's made out of potassium. Now, since this is a salt, it means it's made from a cation and the anion. Now the anion, from the name it says acid salt, the anion is going to be the conjugate base of an acid. What is the conjugate base of an acid? For example, if you take the simplest acid, which is the hydrochloric acid, it will dissociate into H plus plus Cl minus. The Cl minus anion is called conjugate base because it will accept an H plus again to give back the HCl. So Cl minus is the conjugate base of HCl. However, what if we have a diprotic acid? A diprotic acid, like a sulfuric acid, it will dissociate in two steps. The first step will give the conjugate base of the H2SO4, which is the HSO4 minus, and is called the hydrogen sulfate. Now, hydrogen sulfate, it will further dissociate to give the conjugate base of HSO4 minus, which is SO4 2 minus, which is the sulfate. In today's experiment, we are given a table of different conjugate bases, and one of these conjugate bases forms my salt. In order to better understand the data that we will collect from our experiment today, which is the titration, let's take a look on the objective of this experiment and the calculation that we need to carry on. And then we will come back and start our experiment. Okay, so to determine the formula of the acid salt in question, I can simply figure out the molar mass of this acid salt. And now, once I have the molar mass of the acid salt, which is KHA, it's equal to what? It's equal to the atomic mass of potassium plus the molar mass of the conjugate base that's forming this acid salt. Now I know the atomic mass of potassium is 39.1 gram per mole. Now, if I know the molar mass of the acid salt, by subtraction, I can get the molar mass of the conjugate base that's making this acid salt. Once I figured out the molar mass of the conjugate base, I can just compare it to the molar masses of the conjugate bases given to me in this table. The conjugate base that has the closest molar mass to the molar mass that I found is going to be the one that's in my soul. And therefore, I can determine the formula of my acid salt. Now, the question is, how can I determine the molar mass of the acid salt? Now, I know that the relationship between the molar mass and number of mole is number of mole is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. Now, I'm, I know that in the lab it's easy for me to determine the mass since I can weigh it. Now, the question is how can I determine the number of mole? Now, for that, we can just proceed by titration. I will be using a solution of a base, since I have an acid, with a noun concentration. So say I'm using potassium hydroxide with 0.1 molar solution. That's the, preparation that, that's the solution that I have prepared or it was given to me in the lab. 
Now, the volume of the acid salt solution, so I'll be preparing a solution using 100 milliliter volumetric flask. Now, the mass of the potassium acid salt that I need to determine the formula of it, I can just say I'm going to weigh a mass around 1.5 grams. Okay? Now, when I start doing the titration, I will just choose to take 10 milliliter of the solution that I have prepared for the acid salt. And now when I start my titration, I will be first doing a rough titer, titer 1, and then titer 2. So, now here I have a rough volume, I'll call it VR. I will have the V1 for the first titer, and V2 for the second titer. So now, looking at my reaction between the acid salt and the base, I can see that every one mole consumes one mole of the base. So now, I can say that the number of mole of KHA is equal to the number of mole of KOH, which is equal to the concentration of the KOH, which I know it, it's 0 0.1, multiplied by the volume. Now, what is this volume? This volume is the average volume of the bath titration. So that's V is equal to V1 plus V2 divided by 2. I do not take the rough volume because it's not accurate enough. So you can just choose volume 1 and volume 2. So now we have found the number of mole of KHA, but that's not in the solution, 100 milliliter solution, that's in 10 milliliter. So now you can say that the number of mole of KHA in the solution, which is 100 milliliter, it's going to be equal to what? 10 times the number of mole of KHA in the 10 milliliter solution that I have used for titration. Now from this number of mole, now you can just say the molar mass of KHA is equal to now the mass we know it it's 1.500 zero, zero, divided by the number of mole of KHA that you have found and therefore you can determine the molar mass of the acid salt great so now that we know what we want we will start our experiment by first preparing a solution of the acid salt that I have. So I will be weighing around 1.5 grams. Okay, so 
Now when I fill the burette, I fill it a little bit above zero, and now I'll make sure to have the level of the solution inside the burette So make sure the bottom of the meniscus of the solution is touching the zero mark. Now I have my burette calibrated. So now my titrant is ready. I need to prepare the solution of my analyte. For that, I'll be taking 50 milliliter of the solution that I prepared in a beaker. From this 50 milliliter, I will take 10 milliliter of the solution using a volumetric pipette. Okay, we'll need a magnetic part for stirring. Now for me to know when I added exactly enough of potassium hydroxide, I need to use an acid base indicator for the color to change. So I'll use like three to four drops. Now I have my acid salt solution in the Erlenmeyer. I have the base in the burette. I have the acid base indicator with a good stirring. I'm ready to start. First, I will start with what we call a rough titration. Now, rough titration, I will be adding one milliliter by one milliliter, and to check how much, roughly, of potassium hydroxide I will need to completely neutralize the acid salt I have in here. So I see if I have prepared enough concentrated solution for that or not. And then I will repeat this titration twice for accurate measurements. So now I will be adding one by one and every time I will be checking if the color changed or not. So that's one. That's two. There you go. So after I added 8 milliliter, okay, the color of the solution has changed, which means that I have added enough potassium hydroxide to neutralize the acid salt. So now I know that I will need not more than 8 milliliter for the neutralization to happen. So when I repeat now my experiment, I can even go faster. So I will be preparing another solution for from the acid salt. I will take another 10 milliliter. I will repeat exactly the same thing I did before. So that's 10 milliliter of the acid salt solution. I will add to it the phenolphthalene. You should not forget to add the phenolphthalene. It's very important. And now I'm ready to get an accurate measurement. So I do not need to refill the burette because I'm starting from 8. Later on I can subtract to get the exact volume. So now what I will do, I know that it takes up to 8 milliliter of potassium hydroxide to neutralize the acid salt prepared in here. So now I will be adding 6 milliliter at once and from 6 I will be adding drop wise and monitoring the color change in the solution. So now I will be adding, if I'm at 8, I'll be stopping at 14. Okay, and then later I will start adding 
drop by drop. Okay, so here I stopped at 14. I added 6 milliliter and the color of the solution did not change. So now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to be adding drop by drop. And I will be just monitoring the color change. So I will be ready. When I see that the color is not disappearing, I will just stop the addition of the base. I'll go with faster steering. And here, as you can see, the color of the solution changed. So now, I can just look back at the burette and figure out how much exactly I have added or how much exactly it takes to neutralize the acid salt. So I was at 8, and now I'm at 15.7. 15.7 minus 8, it means that I added 7.7 .7 milliliter. I repeat this titration one more time for precision. Then I'll take the average and I will carry on with the calculations as it was discussed previously. I hope this video was helpful to you. I'll see you next time.